Hello and welcome to this Hustle Castle video, and today this would be a guide for all beginners on how to play the game, what you should be looking to do to improve, and what things you should be looking to avoid. This video won't be ideal for most people who have been playing for at least 3 months or more, so if this is you, it might not be worth watching the rest of the video, as I doubt there will be much information here that you don't already know, and won't really apply to you. But don't worry, I will have future videos out for all kinds of players, all the way up to the most experienced. But for now, these will be the main topics today, so you can skip to any of these times if you like, but as always, if you are looking to get the most information possible, then watching the video the whole way through will be ideal for you. There will also be some general tips for beginners at the end, with some that might surprise you, so it could be worth hearing what I have to say, as this will apply to everyone who has been playing the game for less than 3 months. And for anyone that is experienced that happens to be still watching this so far, please make sure you leave your best tips in the comments so then all these new players can see what they should be doing and how to improve their game experience. So starting things off, let's talk about what you are actually meant to be doing when you start the game right from the beginning. To begin with, after you've been pushed through the basics of the fighting levels, you're going to have two fighters with one archer and one tank. Now from here, your castle is going to look pretty empty and it might not seem like you've actually got much to do, and to an extent, for right now, that is true, but there are going to be many things you can do to actually start working towards in the future to give you a lot more things to do. For starters, you're going to want to do as much as you can with the story as you can, and I'll explain some things that do and don't matter while we're going through this, but just before you start to push through the story, make sure you go to the market tab on the main home screen in the bottom right, and on the production tab, build a seller. This is going to be very important at every stage of the game, because the more apples you have, the more you're going to be able to do. Once this has been built, then you can really start to focus on doing the story. So what's there to know? Well firstly, this waypoint here on where you get to fight enemies on different towers isn't something you're going to be doing later down the line, or at least in the future. This is something they've added to the start of your game to give you a different experience, so if you're not a fan of this, don't worry, it's not going to be a main part of the game. The next big thing to note is these diamond symbols above certain waypoints. Hustle Castle have this new offer system, where by paying between these three offers, it will allow you to earn diamonds for completing certain parts of the story. Diamonds are seen as premium currency in the game and can be very useful in making your team stronger, but I would highly recommend everyone to not be paying for any of these offers. If you have done already, then just try and make this your last one for now. Hustle Castle will have a lot of offers down the line, and they will seem very useful at that time, but they are always going to be pushing offers towards you, depending on your situation and what frame level you are, and I'll get back to frame levels later on in the video if you're not sure what I mean or what frame level you actually want to sit at. If you see, for the most expensive diamond progress pass for example, it will cost you £48 for 12,000 diamonds, but if you look at the diamond option on the market, you can actually buy more for the same price and you don't even need to complete anything for it. So, like I've said before, offers can look good, but Hustle Castle are known for being sneaky with how they present offers and when they show them to you. So if you're ever unsure on an offer in the future, no matter how old this video is, leave your comment down below on whatever question you may have about a certain offer, and I'll certainly try and get back to you when I can. So if you're not paying for offers, and you're doing the story and you get stuck, what can you do? Well, you may have seen this, or maybe you haven't, but you can build what's called a fighter training room to level up your fighters under the training tab on the market. You'll start with two level 4 fighters and at 3 stars. Now these stars will be important later on, but for now what you can do is actually just throw these two people into your fighting training room and just let them begin training. At the start, with such a low level, they can level up pretty fast, but in the future it can take many hours, if not days, just to do one level at times. So it's always worth having one to two spare fighters actually training once you've got the people in your barracks at their max level. Now that your fighters are leveling up, you're going to want to add your best items possible to improve their damage, health and armour. To earn better items, the first place to look is actually by doing the story. Some levels will give you chests that actually contain better items, with some levels already telling you what you can actually expect to earn once they've been completed, like this one here for the level 8 rare crossbow. There are going to be many ways of earning better items for your squad, like the workshops that you can get on the market on the home screen, the portal, clan territories, and even events when they come around monthly. Now a lot of things I've just mentioned to you, you might not know many details about yet. So let's talk about the next stage in your adventure, and that's going to be at Throne Room Level 3, which will actually unlock the arena. 
So if you're ready to upgrade your throne room now, then all you need to do is click on your throne room room and then press upgrade. As long as you have all the requirements complete and the resources required, you'll be able to do this. But before upgrading, it can always be worth looking at what the next throne room level will unlock as you might want to get to that stage quicker, rather than staying at where you are currently and just sort of hanging around. Just know that by upgrading too frequently can come with some major consequences, so you can either click on this video here to see what I mean, or look in the description for a helpful video about upgrading too quickly, also known as rushing, and why it can be good and bad. So while this is being built, I have another useful tip that I can tell you straight away, and that's whenever a building is being upgraded or built, by adding any type of dweller to the room, it will actually speed up the process of being built. You'll eventually learn how many people you can place in a certain size room to speed up the process, and with this size, you can fit up to four people inside. Now that the throne room has been built, it's unlocked a lot more features for us to look at. Firstly, the game makes you place in the living room, which increases the capacity of your castle, and how many dwellers that you're allowed inside. The game will also make you drag two people into the living room, and start to get to work on making the woman pregnant, and eventually a new dweller. But we'll come back to this process once it's all done. Now that the throne room has been upgraded, we can actually have a look at the arena. The first thing you're going to notice is that you won't actually have any tickets to start a tournament. But don't worry, if you change the tab in the top left to apples, then you'll be able to do the fight, as long as you got the apples of course. But you'll get less courage points for using apples, which are going to be used for spending in the arena store. The arena will offer you a varied amount of items that you can purchase, and for now everything will be of a rare quality, in blue, and later in the game you'll find purples which are rares, and orange ones which are legendary. You'll also notice at the top of the list that some items will be changing, and this will actually happen weekly. These items will normally be better than the rest by a small amount, and are not actually going to be randomised. And what I mean by this is, if you buy a tank armour, you will actually get a tank armour, and not something else. But again, as they change weekly, you will need to make sure that you save up enough quickly to get whichever ones that you want. Up until your fighters get to level 40 with every throne room level, I would actually recommend buying rare items until it can fill your slots on your fighters as a good starting point. From there you can actually work towards purples and eventually legendaries once your team is more set up for success. And as a general rule of thumb, rare items will always be at your max fighting level or at least a few levels below it, and they are considered a low quality item, but for now they will always do in helping you get through the story and unlocking better items. So just for now, buy whatever you want that will help fill your team up with blue items, and as you do more and more arenas in completing the story and upgrading your throne room, you'll be eventually getting to better items. Remember to like the video if you're enjoying it so far, and leave any questions you might have that I can help you with. So let's start a fight and show you what you can expect, and what you actually need to know. And remember to select apples if you don't have any tickets at this time. So firstly, you will see a lot of people that aren't in the clan, and that's because clans actually are locked at throne room level 4, but I will cover that later on as that will be very important later on. The next thing you might notice is everyone is going to be worth the same 30 points on the very first round, but this will change after your first fight. Depending on what happened in your last fight, people below your current position will only be worth 30 points, but for people who got placed above you will be worth 45 points, and that's because they should be harder. And the quicker you can actually win your fights, the more points you're going to earn, so you don't actually want your fights to drag up too long, even if you do get the win in the end. This isn't going to be a full guide on how to do the arena strategically, I just wanted to cover the basics on the things you may have missed. The one thing I will say with arenas, they will be much easier to do in the early stages of the game, so the lower your throne room. And if you do increase your throne room level and fighter level too quickly, you will unfortunately get stuck behind for some time, and this will take a very long time before you can actually enter the top 3 again, just because other people will be better than you. The last thing to really talk about is where you actually place in your arena when it finishes. On the arena homepage it will say what rewards you will get for coming in certain positions. And to make sure you always do all 5 fights, as they do give you a small bonus of amount of courage points just for completing each round, even if you don't get the win. So just keep doing your arenas with apples until you can improve your squad and complete more of the story. And once this arena is actually done, don't be worried that you actually haven't got any courage points even if you did get in the top 3 or even at the bottom. It won't be in your arena store yet, what you will need to do is actually leave the arena, go back to your homepage to the actual starting screen, and accept whatever placement you got. And for coming in the top 3, you will receive a chest that will come with bonus rewards. From my chest, I was able to get an uncommon tank armor and an uncommon ring for people who earn me gold in my castle. But let's now talk about the child in my castle. This is the second stage after your female has been made pregnant in your living room, and once your child is ready to grow up, they will have a candle symbol above their head. 
Once you press the candles, it will turn them into an adult, and for me, it was a female. Now from there, the game will force you to upgrade their stars to a 4 star, but I would highly recommend on not doing this in the future, but I can explain in just a minute. So, considering she will be the highest starred female in my castle, it will make sense to add them to the living room straight away and start the process again of getting higher star dwellers. It's not guaranteed, but that's why you always use your highest stars people that you've got possible. And I do actually have a fantastic video on how to get 5 star dwellers and the best ways of going about it. So you can click the link here, or in the description, or at the end of the video, whatever's best for you. But just for now, keep doing the same process of adding people to your living room as you've seen before. And if anyone is below a 3 star, just kick them out by clicking on them, and select the 3 lines at the top of the screen, and press banish from castle. While you're making new dwellers, you always want to be using your highest starred people, so anyone that's less than a 3 star will actually make it harder for you to get better dwellers. So as of right now, I actually have plenty more I wanted to go through, so I'm really sorry I will have to make this into a 2 part video to make sure I can cover everything properly. So make sure you get subscribed to not miss out on next week's video, and if you're on your chance of earning 250 diamonds every single week, I do have these diamond giveaways that Hustle Castle have kindly supported me with. All you need to do is click on the Gleam link in the description and enter your in-game ID. To find this, all you need to do is click on your profile in the top left, and again in the top left, you'll see this long number, and you can copy this by pressing the blue icon. So, good luck to everyone that actually joins in all future diamond giveaways, but for now, let's see who won this week's giveaway. So well done to everyone that has won, and as usual, the next giveaway is live now and is ready to join, so good luck to everyone that does. And here's the video on how to get 5 star dwellers, and I think this will be the best video out there to get the best information possible, and here's the other video on why rushing is good and bad, as I see a lot of people making this mistake. And to everyone, thank you for watching.